y'all, Jamie O here, and today I'll be helping you understand gluten and why or why not you should be gluten free. Hey y'all, so I just got back from a trade show, uh, loosely termed the food show because it's mostly food. And if you follow me on Twitter, you saw this morning that I was prepped for and super excited. It's like the comic book convention for foodie. If you've been following me for a while, you know that my dad and I actually own a country store together. And we have a pretty solid food business that runs through that country store. So for a while, you guys know I've been talking about having a video on gluten and what is gluten free. And at today's show, I said I definitely have to post this video. Um, a question that I that I get a lot is actually on what is gluten or um, should I be gluten free? Or I've had friends that have gone gluten free that have really no reason to go gluten free. And my concern is that this is becoming something that's a trend when really it's no different than a peanut allergy. Um, if you were are allergic to peanuts, you should stay away from peanuts. If you are not allergic to peanuts, then you really have nothing to worry about. Gluten actually refers to the proteins found in wheat. Um, not just wheat, but it also can include barley and rye. Um, but mostly when we talk about gluten, we're usually referring to wheat. So basically what those proteins do is they help the they help the grain itself hold its shape. So think of it as like a glue. <laughs> Um, honestly, the biggest reason is because people don't understand food. Um, that's the whole purpose of this channel is to help educate people on food in an accessible and inexpensive way. So, you know, gluten obviously will be found in anything that wheat, barley, or rye are found in. So that can be as simple as things like pasta, bread, uh, beer, or beer with malt in it. Um, but that can also get kind of complex because in this country especially, we tend to mill all of our grains together. So it can affect things like potato flour or bean flour, or any kind of flour that's milled right after wheat flour or rye flour or barley flour. Um, it also could be in food coloring. So because we have so many foods that are processed in the same vicinity, it becomes a problem for those who have a gluten intolerance or celiac disease. <laughs> Celiac disease is basically a complete intolerance to gluten, um, and it can have it can cause issues from anything like gastrointestinal issues, rashes, fatigue, and so basically what happens is the gluten disturbs and causes problem in the small intestine, and basically it is an allergic reaction in the small intestine that can lead to more issues lack, such as lack of nutrient absorption in the body from food and even cancer if there's overexposure or continued exposure and damage to those cells in the intestines. So people who are gluten intolerant don't aren't quite as susceptible to problems with gluten as people with celiac but they still have very similar issues in that they can have headache or rash or gastric issues. So they need to stay away from gluten. So like I said, one of the reasons why we have it labeled on everything is because people don't understand food. One of my biggest pet peeves is being in a store or just like today at the trade show, seeing things that wouldn't even have gluten in them um, or having people say like, oh, like I had a, a a rep today and this is nothing against him because he was doing his job and he was doing it very well um, but for them to say oh and it's gluten free well it's coconut milk it was never gonna have gluten in it <laughs> but it really in today's world where we don't have things being processed alone or we don't have things being processed locally um, it becomes an issue because you don't know um, when it comes to medications folks with celiac definitely have to check and see hey does this have gluten in it and the odds of you actually having medication that has gluten in it are very slim but because it can be such an extreme reaction they need to know ahead of time I've had quite a few people, especially family members, say things like, well, we didn't have gluten intolerance in my day. Well, actually, and this is a very interesting study that has just come about, um, they found that there is a common virus that can turn this gene on. And it's actually been going around and making it a little bit more frequent. So there's not very many people who actually are gluten intolerant or who have celiac, but for those who are it is very serious um, and it is becoming more common and part of that is because we live in a different world today and the other thing is just because you didn't hear about it 
in your day doesn't mean it didn't exist. A um, hundred years ago, people didn't hear about cancer nearly as much as they hear about it now, but one, it was known as something else. Two, it wasn't as well understood. And three, it still existed. You just heard less about it because it wasn't understood yet. We have so many things that have gluten in it. I mean, in this country alone, grains is a major food group. So we have bread, we have desserts with grains in it. We have drinks such as such as beer with grains in it. We have drinks that have food coloring in it. So you know, there's so many things that we use it in even more now than we did a hundred years ago. So people are noticing, okay, there's something wrong here. And there's also times where people have thought for years they were allergic to something else when actually they were allergic to gluten. It's hard to diagnose gluten. You can actually go, and this is a perfect example, my fiance actually just thought it was a general allergy lo and behold we found out it was actually a gluten intolerance it's not severe but it is there and it's so hard to figure out if that's what it is because so many things are cross-contaminated so basically to find out if you have it you might think that you have like a sinus issue pretty frequently and actually it's gluten and once you remove that from your diet which i stress again is hard to do and you basically have to do a 30-day sometimes even longer um, period without any gluten, which like I said, it's hard to do because we have so many, so many cross contaminated foods today. But afterwards, if a person is trying to figure out if that's what they have, they'll realize, okay, either I feel better or I don't. And if they feel better, it's because that's what it was. So I hope this answers a lot of you guys' questions. If you have any comments or further questions about it, please leave it down below. And of course, please share this video so that you can help to make others more food empowered as always a special thank you to my foodies on patreon thanks for watching <laughs>